Okay, good afternoon. My name is Skip Sauls. I'm a product manager for Salesforce Einstein Analytics, and I'm here to talk to you today a bit about what is Einstein Analytics, and for me, more importantly, what is the platform that you can use? In fact, you as developers can take this and extend analytics, embed it, and use it inside of your applications. So um, I'm sure you've seen this already today, but I have to put up the forward-looking statements. Um, everything I show you today is in the Winter 18 release, except as noted. And I'll tell you if it's a pilot feature or something like that that you need to be aware of. But you should be basing your purchasing decisions only on the things that are currently in the uh, Winter 18 release. So just a quick overview of where is Salesforce Analytics. We have traditional operation analytics, reports, and that sort of thing. You're familiar with that. Then we have Einstein Analytics and then Einstein Discovery. And so um, if you know the product formerly known as Wave Analytics, that is now Einstein Analy Analytics. So we're underneath that umbrella. But it's still the same basic product that you're probably familiar with from the past uh, three or so years. Who here has had a chance to use Einstein Analytics or go through a trailhead or something to that effect? OK, so a few folks. So this is not going to be a deep tutorial because we've only got a few minutes here, but I will touch on a few key points of what makes up Einstein Analytics and kind of where it fits in. And we'll talk about this platform. So um, one of the things that you'll find with Einstein Analytics is that you want to get the data into a form where you can manipulate it in some way and do some cool transformations and queries and do something with it, make some sense of it. Because analytics is all about how do you make better sense of your data and make your users more effective. So we have this concept of a data set which represents the data you're bringing into it, whether it's from Salesforce or from external sources. It can be from CSV files, it can be from Amazon Redshift, pretty much anything you want to, you can find a way to get it into it. Now, it's important to note that these do not live in the Salesforce core. We're not sitting inside of the Oracle database. We're not sitting underneath the standard app server. We're in a different form that is highly optimized for large-scale queries. It's basically flattened out and heavily indexed. So you can do things at a scale that would be tough to do in the traditional Salesforce core that you're probably familiar with. Now, we use something called a data flow to manipulate this data and bring it into these data sets. So the data flow is scheduled. It has the notions of transforms and loading. Um, you may know terms such as ETL and ELT from other products. That's basically what's happening here. So this data flow is run at some uh, period. It goes out, grabs the data, and then turns it into the form that we can use for Einstein Analytics. Now you have a lot of control over this. You can take it and you can merge things, you can do joins, you can do transforms. It's very powerful and you can get it into a form that you can use for the slicing and dicing someone might do in their app. And then we have something called lenses. And just like the name implies, this is a view onto a data set. And effectively, behind the scenes, it is a query in something called SQL, S-A-Q-L, not S-O-Q-L which is a Salesforce analytics query language. Now, typically you don't interact with that SAQL directly. Most of the time you'll use visual tools to create these queries and create some sort of visualization as you see here. And then those can be rolled up into dashboards. And a dashboard is a curated view onto this data, one or more data sets. Um, it's not mapped to one particular object or one particular data set. It is, in fact, a view of multiple things you're bringing into it that you can interact with. And these are things that are live that you can do things with. It's not just a static view. It's not the same thing as a report with a traditional chart and that sort of thing. It's actually a, a live, living, interactive document. And then we roll these up into something we call apps. Now, effectively, the app is much like a folder. And all it's doing is saying, put the things that are related to each other into a logical grouping. It's not an app like a installable app on a mobile device, but it is a logical grouping. And if you've been with Salesforce long enough, you know there's lots and lots of things we call apps. There's this whole class of things that are apps, but that's effectively what we're talking about here. And then something called an app template. Now this is a really cool feature that makes it so you can easily distribute your applications to different orgs or different users. And this is important because traditional packaging in Salesforce is designed for the metadata, but not really the data. And it's meant to install and go off and use it. 
the template lets you go in and change these definitions, these data sets, dashboards, and so forth, so that it matches the shape of your org. So the template is a live, living, interactive piece. It even has some programmatic pieces. So if you want to, you can use Apex, you can use Visual Force, and you can custom tailor these apps to fit your particular needs or the needs of your customer. So where does this all fit together? Well, we have this thing we call the Einstein Analytics Developer Experience, EADX for short. And this fits into the larger Salesforce platform. In fact, we try to leverage Salesforce platform features wherever possible. So where there's a feature for packaging or for metadata or for APIs or for components, we use that. Um, the only time we would not use a feature that's built into the platform is if something doesn't exist or it's somehow not suitable. But our goal is to make it so that you, as a Salesforce user, a Salesforce customer, can feel familiar with this. And if you've, used, you've been using our APIs, our Lightning components, our Visual Force components, our Apex classes, you'll find this all fits in very nicely. And I'm going to show you that in the demo here in just a second. So this is kind of the whole spectrum of things. Again, some of these are unique to Einstein Analytics, particularly things like the templates. But a lot of this is just built on top of standard Salesforce platform technologies. So let's go into a demo, because I know that you don't want to see slide after slide. So let's talk to the live demo and show a few things. So we'll bring this up here. And this is a demo we built just for Dreamforce with several little areas here, all sitting on top of the Lightning experience. Um, if you want to see more details about this and how it's built, there's a, pod, a demo pod back here in the developer forest. It says Einstein Analytics. All these are there. And several developers from my team, as well as Einstein Analytics specialists, are there. And they can walk you through and show you pieces of this. And if you're interested, just find me and ask about it. I'll show you the code. We can dig into it. I love showing what happens behind the scenes, because you oftentimes miss that at events like this, where it's mostly kind of outbound marketing type stuff. So I like to say, well, let's look behind it and see how it all works. So let me show you the Apex, um, or the SDK demo, rather. And this is actually built using Lightning components and some Apex and our dashboards. Now, the dashboards are something that we're going to build in Einstein Analytics, and we can expose into this demo here. And just to show you this here, I'm going to bring up my leaderboard. And this gives a good example of an application that's been built using Einstein Analytics as part of our sales analytics offering. So this is an app for Sales Cloud. We have similar offerings for service, for finance, health, et cetera, all built on top of this platform. Now, in this dashboard, you can go into it and you can interact with it by clicking inside of these filters and selectors here. So you can say, well, show me things for the CEO. Um, show me for the forecast category pipeline. And then say, update. And you'll see that the dashboard changes based upon that. So this is the traditional view where you're going into analytics to use it. Well, one of the things that we want to do is change that a bit, because a lot of times, you already have an existing model for your UI. You've got an application you spent a lot of time on. You built it in either Classic or Lightning. And you say, I want to surface this view for my users, but I can't train them on everything in analytics. Not everybody wants to or can be a data scientist or data analyst. That's not their job. We have a lot of great tools for those users, but a lot of users say, hey, just show me what's relevant to my work. Make me more effective, whether I'm in sales, service, or some other role. So let's control this dashboard from Lightning. Now, who here is familiar with Lightning components and Lightning events? So a few people here. So the basic idea is that all of these components that make up Lightning Experience <coughs> excuse me, have a standard contract, which is to say, what are the attributes, and what are the events, and what are the methods that I can interact with? So this is basically how it talks to the rest of the world. So you, as a developer, have a lot of power to say, I want to allow people to set these values or fire these events. And I'm going to listen to those and respond to them. I'm going to, in turn, fire events that something else listens to. It's a great way to build a component-based app. All of Lightning Experience is built on this same framework. So we've taken that, and we've built some custom components over here on the left. And we've got our dashboard inside of a component as well. <coughs> and we'll just all pick a data set, such as opportunities. And I'm going to pick a dimension such as the opportunity type. And this is going to go and find all the possible types here. At least it should. 
Well, we should see a list there. Let's try to refresh our view. Sorry about that. Maybe my network has just gotten incredibly slow. I think that's part of it. Everybody stop, stop tweeting for a second. Maybe the, the bandwidth will free up. So while we wait for the uh, network to uh, recover, um, the basic idea is that we should be seeing a list of forecast category names. Uh, and now you know it's a real demo because it's not working. Um, and my network seems to have totally died. Oops. Does anybody know if the network is down? Well, that's perfect timing, so um, let me see if I can get it to respond. Well, if you could see this, what I was gonna do is I was going to create the event and fire it. Um, I apologize, this is uh, some kind of network difficulty. But um, what happens there is we actually create a payload using JSON, and then we're going to fire the event, and the dashboard's going to react to it. you have any idea why this is not responding? I don't, but we have a wired network here as well, so. Give it a moment, you should be back in business. There we go. Again, sorry for the uh, difficulty there. Now let's try this again. Okay, one more go. We'll bring up the dashboard, we'll go back into the leaderboard, and we're gonna select our opportunity data set and our forecast category. And what I'll do is I'll add some of these values over here. And this is all using standard Lightning components. By the way, if you haven't tried the new Lightning components that are in the winter release, these things like this dueling pick list are very easy to use. They're all baked in. And down below here, to show you kind of what's happening, I'm building up this payload in JSON right here. And you can see here the forecast category name omitted in best case. So behind the scenes, I'm just building up the payload. When I click fire, that fires it and the dashboard reacts to it. So again, the idea here is that you can tie this to your particular UI. Now you wouldn't give your business users that UI. This is purely for developers to kind of see how it's all done. Great for demos and that sort of thing. But in your actual app, you'd be selecting things in a, a record view, a list view, various controls and that sort of thing. And you can say, take all the context there <coughs> and create the event to fire uh, for the dashboard to listen to. Okay, now who here uses Apex? Okay, a few folks. So if you're not familiar with Apex, that is the server side language of Salesforce. It's not Java, even though it looks a little bit like Java in places. Um, but the cool part about it is, is you can use that within your applications to custom tailor it. And you can package it, distribute it. Um, you can you know, test it. It's baked into the platform. It's our standard language. Now, in previous iterations of Einstein Analytics, everything had to be pulled into this data set externally and used there. But now we can pull in things from something called the Apex Step, hence the name, the Apex Step Demo. Now, the basic idea is that with the Apex step, you're going to go and hit an Apex class, an Apex controller, at a REST endpoint, and you're going to get the data back and display it directly in the dashboard. Now, this is important because there's times when you need something that's live that's not part of the piece that's in analytics, because analytics is always going to be only as fresh as the last time the data flow was run. So in this case, we're going to get it directly from force.com, hence it's the updated record. Now, what we've done in this little test here is again built something for fun, which is a uh, Apex step editor. And in this case, I can pick things like the donut test. <coughs> and I can see the actual JSON payload that's expected by the dashboard. So here I can go in and put a value like you know, 445 and maybe 223. And when I click update, you'll see the chart on the right-hand side there update dynamically. 
Now, how do we do this? I'll tell you the magic behind the scenes here. So this Apex class, when you um, update it, it writes out the record using standard SOQL Salesforce object query language, and that causes a trigger to fire. The trigger fires, and it fires a platform event, which I'm listening to on the client, and I tell the dashboard it needs to update itself. So we're using all these things in Salesforce to give us this round trip experience. So we're using Lightning, Apex, platform events, and Einstein Analytics, and Analytics all together inside of the app. Now, to round this out, let's go to the Twitter Live version of this. In this case, we're using Apex a bit differently. We're going to use callouts to hit a Twitter endpoint to do searches and so forth and show you what's happening with it. So in Apex, if you've used it, you know that you can make a uh, HTTP call out to some endpoint, grab the data, and then do something with it. In this case, we turn it around and we massage it a bit and return it back to the dashboard in the expected form, similar to what we saw in the earlier demo. So in this case, um, I've got various hashtags here. And the cool thing is, is even this list is controlled by Apex. And I'll show you why here. So I'm going to go here and bring up the uh, hashtag. <coughs> and this is a lightning component that edits the S object. I'm going to move DF17 down. <coughs> and I'm going to add one here at the bottom. I'm going to put in um, my demo just for kicks. And I'm going to click Update. And you'll see it updates on the right-hand side. And you'll see my demo has appeared at the bottom here. So that's a live update there. And every time we do this, we can you know, move these around, move Hilo up a little bit. Oops. Click Update again, and you'll see it update in the list on the right-hand side. And this is true for the usernames, the hashtags, et cetera. And every time I select one of these, it's going to go off and refresh the data, pulling it from Twitter. So I can say, well, let's look at you know, the trailhead tweets here, like so. And you see various stats being displayed there. So again, it's going into Apex, out to Twitter, and back. And it gives you an idea of the kind of speed you can get. Now, you have to keep in mind, though, you still have all of the limits of Apex. So in terms of the number of callouts, the data size, the heap, all that still applies. So don't expect to do full bore, large scale analytics with it, but it's great when you have live data you want to pull into the dashboard. And you can even put in a little update thing that says, go off and update this every three seconds or so. And this is kind of cool until you blow out your, your limits on Twitter, which I've done a few times. So you have to watch the limits there as well. They've got API limits and so forth. And if you're talking to someone who's tweeting, they could tweet on one of these subjects, and you can see the live results appearing in the dashboards. OK, I'm just about out of time, so I'm going to pop back out here and open it up for Q&A, but let you know that afterwards, I'll be here around for a few minutes if you want to come ask questions. Come by and find me at any point. Come by our booth over here. We'd love to talk to you about it and see what you're doing with Einstein Analytics. And importantly, what do you want in the platform? Um, a few more quick slides here. Um, we have additional resources. There's lots of different keynotes. There's different zones around. Just look around. You'll see folks wearing lab coats for analytics experts. And then we have a user research program where if you'd like to sign up and learn about and how to work with our um, UX folks, they would love your feedback as well on what you'd like to see in terms of better tools and so forth. And then finally, I just want to say thanks to everybody for coming. I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. We're almost at the 20-minute mark. I know you've got your next sessions to go to. But again, I'll stay here for a few minutes for Q&A if you'd like, maybe over in this section here. But again, thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of Dreamforce.